at the following accreditations. ABR, GRI, CRS, but complains he had no M-O-N-E-Y after his first year in real estate. In 1991, when I was just a baby, John started his career in real estate. A short time later, he was working of the year in his office. In 1992, John won a gold medal in the Massachusetts Taekwondo State Championships, which qualified him to compete nationally, where he had an opportunity to try out the Olympic State, the United States Olympic team. In 1994, John closed 63 transactions, in 95, 81 transactions, in 96, he closed 90 transactions in just nine months with an average commission of 7% on each listing. The following year, John became sales manager and then senior vice president for one of the country's largest real estate companies, where he was the company's top recruiting, recruiting 71 agents in one year. He also has a phenomenal opportunity to work as a professional speaker, sales trainer, and then director with North America's largest and most results-getting <coughs> real estate training company, Lloyd Whitman Courses. From 2006 to 2009, John was overseeing 17 offices with over 425 agents and performed brilliantly as a regional vice president. As of this year, John is back in sales, and I'm glad he is, and is currently working to rebuild his book of business. However, he still continues his passion in helping others by being here today. Please welcome John Miller.
can really hurt you really bad. A friend of mine got hurt really bad uh, when his cell phone went off. Plus, he was in the closet of his neighbor's bedroom when it happened. That was an assault. <laughs> this poor woman thought it was real. It's just a joke. <laughs> I saw her on a soap opera. It wasn't real. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to connect with you because we decided that real estate would be the vehicle to get there. When we got into this business, we talked about when you saw the flyer to get into this business, you realized that, I don't know what you guys were thinking. <laughs> real estate. We have a higher attrition rate than the insurance industry, right? <laughs> she said, me neither, right? <laughs> Why is it that so many people get into real estate and yet so many fail? More than 70% fail. In fact, they start failing within the first three months that they get into the business. But yet, why is it that others make their dreams come true and they make it in real estate? There are some specific things, and we're going to cover those today, I promise. Okay? Let's go to your notes, if you will, for a minute. The secret of successful selling should be the first page. You all have that? Good. Great. I want to start with the, the top five countdown the questions. And uh, number five says, most people entering the real estate business have high expectations, low expectations, or no expectations. What do you think, Joyce, right? Hi, you got it. <laughs> You've seen it a number of times, too, I'm sure. High expectations. Oh, sure. I'm going to get me a license and some business cards and a name badge and uh, some open house signs and a four-door car, right? <laughs> a nice one. <laughs> because the people will think I'm successful and they'll want to do business with me because I'm successful. And I'm going to make a lot of what? Help me out, gang. Money. 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 Right? Number four, selling means A, to serve, B, to solve problems, or C, to persuade, or D, all of the above. All of the above. By the way, here's a hint. Whenever all of the above is an option, that's the answer. <laughs> Number three, what happens to seven out of ten real estate people in the first two years? They do fine. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> they quit or they become brokers. <laughs> or D, they become broker. <laughs> that's what happened to me. Can anyone relate to that, by the way? After their first year in real estate, when Colleen read the introduction, mm -hmm. I had less money after my first year in real estate than I did before I joined. I remember my wife at the time taking ads from the newspaper for real jobs. I call them real jobs. That's when you give people your time and they give you money back, you know. <laughs> and she put them on my pillow and she said, you know, go get a real job. You know, this ain't working. And I just stayed with it. I said, no, there are some people out there that are making it happen. I just need to find out what they're doing and do what they're doing. And then I know I can make that and get through this. Okay? Number two, which is the most effective two-word closing question? <coughs> closing question. What's a closing question? I'm here. <laughs> a, sign here. B, any questions? Or C, ready now? Actually, the answer is B, any questions? How many here are graduates of any Floyd Wicked program? Raise your hand, please. Great. How many? Let me see. Okay, great. I was trained by Floyd. Floyd is my mentor. I was literally on a conference call with Floyd uh, this morning. I'm doing some part-time work with his company right now. And um, if you ever get an opportunity or a chance to attend a Floyd Wicked program, by all means, jump on it. Uh, those who have attended a program, uh, before, would you all agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Powerful, powerful program. If you ever get an opportunity to go to one. Um, so, uh, a lot of this material, I want to give credit where credit is due, comes from Floyd and what he taught. Uh, by the way, gang, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> you already paid your 15 bucks, and now I tell you this, right? <laughs> but that should be encouraging to you that I'm not the brightest bulb in the chandelier or the sharpest knife in the drawer, because if I can do it, you can do it too. All right. Now, number one, listings are A, real good for you, B, hard to get, or C, the name of the game. 
the name of the game. How many agree with that premise? Raise your hand, right? Listings are the name of the game. Why are listings the name of the game? Let's have some interaction. They have to come to you. Great point. What else? Control the market. Absolutely. Judy says control the market. Absolutely. What else? Yes, yeah, Skip. A lot easier to manage than buyers. A lot easier to manage than buyers. Wow. Yes, Teresa. List to last. List to last. What does that mean, gang? List to last. That means if, you, if you're going to last in real estate, you need to have listings. Let me equate it to this for you, if you don't mind. Imagine a store. You walk in. Let's say it's at the Auburn Mall. Close by, right? You go into the store, and there are shelves all along the walls. Okay? There's a cash register right by the door at a beautiful counter. Flooring is gorgeous. The, the color of the walls are painted beautifully. The music that's coming up of the loud of the speakers and the ceiling is very relaxing. And as you look around, there's nothing there. No inventory. No product to sell. Will that business survive? Yes or no? Help me out, everybody. No. no. Why? Has no what? Has no inventory. As a real estate agent, in order to be truly effective, I know that some of you are successful buyer agents where you exclusively work with buyers. However, if you really want to make it to the next level, you have to have some inventory in. Okay? And we're going to talk about that a little later as well. That's one of the secrets. I'm giving you a little preview. You have to have an inventory. Now, We go to the next page. You have to be many things, but to make it in real estate, you have to be a, who can fill in that blank form? And you can be funny if you want. I like to have fun if you want. So, uh, you have to be a what? You have to be what? Yes. Successful, you have to be a what? 
shrink. Write this in the blank, guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Once he says a shrink, right? How many of you have been in counseling, or excuse me, been counseling, and now you need counseling, right? <laughs> yeah. Barbara's is okay. Hand holding. Yeah, absolutely. Got to be able to hand hold. No doubt. Write in the blank, folks. Sales person. Sales person. Some of you, when you started to write that down, you scoured. I don't know if you can see your own face all the time like this one. Yeah. What do you think of when you think of the word salesperson? Be honest. What else? Shyster? What else? Pushy. Pushy, right? Absolutely. Well, in sales, you are in sales. It even says it right on your license tag, right? <laughs> salesperson. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about being a salesperson and what the intent of a salesperson should be. And part of your job, part of being successful in real estate, is truly educating the consumers as to what a professional salesperson is and to be proud of being a salesperson. If you go to the next line here, it says you need to learn the art of Persuasion. If you would please write that in, persuasion. <coughs> when I think of persuasion, some people think of it as being negative. I think of it as being positive. Because persuasion to me is getting somebody to do something that they will thank you for later on. How many agree with that phrase? Raise your hand. How many ever worked with a buyer or seller? You had to give them a little push. You had to persuade them in one way or another, right, Mandy? You got you to give them a little push because you knew it was good for them, right? You knew that out of all the homes out there, this was the best one for them. Another one that came up wouldn't be better, and you had to give them a little push. Use a little bit of persuasion to get them into that situation. Now, um, I want to talk about Floyd Wickman for a minute. Floyd Wickman averaged, right, this at 86 listings a year for seven years. So when I give you this information, gang, this is all psychologically sound, history-proven techniques that I'm sharing with you today, okay? And I've used them personally, and they work, and they're powerful. However, why is it that if so many people know about this information, why aren't they all successful? They don't use it. Exactly right. Right? They don't use it. So that's the key. Use the information you have. Now, um, selling means to serve and to solve problems. Selling means to serve and to solve problems. Uh, in 1967, uh, gang, Floyd spent $1,100. Um, you economists in the room that are, or, you know, uh, $1,100 in 1967. How much money would that be today, roughly? Five grand. 15000 15000 Imagine spending that much money today on a sales training program. Imagine that. If you spent that money, you made that investment. Um, but here's what he learned again. He learned the secret of being in control. And for over 30 years, he's been sharing it with the real estate industry. But not everybody... Some people are listening, but not everybody's implementing. So if I could share with you one thing today, okay, is that stay in training forever and implement what you learn. Some people say to me, Gerard, how did you how did you sell so many homes? Well, first of all, when they realized what the average sale price was in the early 90s, that they realized that I had to sell that many homes just to survive, <laughs> just to make a, a good living. But, you know, um, what I did was I went to training. And whenever I went to a training class, I would take one-third of the paper on the side, and I'd draw a line, and at the top of the page, I would put down the words, ideas to implement. And as I was going through the training class, I would fill out a to-do list, a checklist, and when I got back to the office, I would implement those things on the checklist. What do most people do? Be honest. Did you all hear that? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so... It's, it's thinking. How many times have you ever been to a seminar and you went, oh, that's a good one. That's a good idea, right? But then we forget about it when we get back. We have good intentions, right? Isn't there a saying about good intentions? I forget how it goes. 
How's it go? Oh, what is it? The path is paved with good intentions. path is paved with good intentions. Oh. So we learned the secret of being in control. I'm going to teach you that today, gang. I'm going to teach you about being in control. How many would you, would you agree that 7 out of 10 real estate agents in this real estate industry are out of control? Raise your hand if you think that. <laughs> I didn't say you. I said everyone else, right? <laughs> Listen, there are only, I think, how many people on the board? Over a thousand, maybe, right? And, um, and 50 people showed up here today. Of course, we, we stopped the registration. Uh, and these folks, in the, they didn't care that the registration it was filled up. They showed up anyway. How's that? Let's give them a round. <laughs> Here's what happened. They said, sorry, we're all filled up. Go away. And they showed up anyway. What does that tell you? Yeah, right? <laughs> you know you know what's interesting, folks? Every time I give a talk, the people that need to hear it the most, where are they? Somewhere else. <laughs> They're not here, right? So, now, uh, I wrote this quote down. Few agents will spend a penny on their mind, but they'll spend hundreds on their hair. <laughs> right? I remember this quote from a long time ago. Benjamin Franklin said that when you take the coins from your purse, okay, when you take the coins from your purse and you invest them into your mind, your mind will put coin, coins in your where? In your purse. Absolutely. That is mine, by the way. <laughs> so invest in yourself. Invest in your mind. I can't tell you how many agents I've seen. I remember my first year in real estate. Wow, great office, great people around me, uh, really nice people, really cared about me. They wanted, you know, they seemed like they really cared. But I remember going to my first seminar. You know one of those seminars where the speaker talks for two or three hours and then they sell their stuff in the back of the room. They're just, at the time, were cassette tapes for, uh, for you young people. You don't know what I'm talking about, but they were these little plastic things that we put into a, a walker. You don't know what that is either, right? But anyway, uh, <laughs> And they have the workbooks and all that other good stuff. And I remember listening to the speaker, and I remember him saying something, you know, uh, that if you just implement these techniques, you'll be successful in real estate. And let me share with you about Joe in Texas, and Harvey in Louisiana, and Louise in, in, uh, in California, and all their success. And I thought to myself, yeah, I want to be like Louise. I want to be successful. And just as that was settling into my brain, my friends around me at the end of the talk said, ah, that's a bunch of fun. He just wants you to buy this stuff. Right? So I, I started getting bummed out with him. I said, oh, so this guy's just a shyster in it? Huh. Well, that stinks. So I went to the back of the room and I started looking at the material and I thought, well, let me look at it. Maybe there is some substance here. Maybe there's something here that will actually be of real value. And as I was hanging around, my friends kind of left because there were uh, there was a broker's open house where they were giving away you know free food. <laughs> you know, it was hilarious. You know, for years I heard there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> Not when you're in real estate game, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so I waited at the back of the room, and literally, honest to goodness, gang, I was the last person in the room. Everyone had left. People had, by the dozens, went up to the back table and paid their money. And as I was looking at the material, and I thought I had this thought, I'm like, wow, this stuff's pretty good. I'm not learning this in my office. And the other agents in my office certainly aren't telling me this stuff, and I'm wondering if it really works. And then I had this flash, I thought, if I could read everything that he has here right now, I wouldn't have to buy it. <laughs> so, and so what I did was, I, as I was reading it, they started packing up. They're putting everything in the boxes. They're putting a credit card machine away and everything. And I was standing there and I thought, well, I, I didn't know what to do. So the speaker went up to me, Judy, and he said, uh, he said, hey, how are you doing? My name's Rod. He shook my hand like this. And I said, good, how are you? He says, can I help you with anything? I said, uh, well, to be honest with you, my friend said that this was a ripoff. And he uh, looked at me, Judy, and he said, it is. And he took it out of my hand like this, and he put it in the box. And I just stood there, 23 years old, in complete shock. 
<laughs> What's he doing? Now he took it away from me. Now I really want it. <laughs> of course, he knew that. He knew what he was doing. And so I said to him, I said, well, what do you mean? It's a ripoff. I mean, I, I don't get it. He goes, here's the deal, John. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you one time. And always remember this. If you buy my products and you don't crack the cellophane of these products and you don't implement what it is that I'm sharing with you, you have completely and totally been ripped off. And I thought, okay. And I pulled out my credit card. And I took the, the package. Now, I'm in real estate for a few months now. And the wife is really hammering me saying, get a real job, right? Uh, and so I take the, I had tons of, it was like five different volumes of stuff. It was a big bag. The bag was practically ripping of all the products that this gentleman was selling. I remember it was close to $500. I didn't have the money. I ran out of money. I put it on a credit card. And I remember taking it out of my trunk and literally sneaking it into the house <laughs> to tell me, what did you buy now? What did you waste money on now in real estate that isn't working? I snuck it up to my uh, attic room on 86 Rockland Road in Auburn, Massachusetts, up in, up in this attic bedroom, and I set up a radio and a desk, and I sat there, and I put the cassettes in, and I started, and I, I stayed out of the office, and I started at... Uh, page one, and I went through the workbook, and I thought, okay, here's my checklist of things to implement, and I started implementing things, and I started getting my head handed to me, and I started getting beat up, and I started making mistakes, and I started failing, and it was at that point that I thought, what? You got me. I'm out of here. What did I do? This is crazy. But then I also realized that if you, if, like, in real estate, it's a numbers game, right, Andy? So if you do enough of it often enough, I remember one speaker saying, listen, if you cold call on the phone, and if you just grunted and said, Ugh, eventually somebody would say, you must be a realtor. Come list my house. It's just the numbers. You know? So sometimes it doesn't matter what you say. It's just how often are you doing. All right? So always stay in training and implement what you learn. How many here, after hearing that story, are committed right now to implementing what you learn from here on out? Raise your hand if you're with me. Are you with me? About 60%. That's not bad. That's not bad. Almost 70%. Because that's about the ratio, right? Okay. Now, there are... Here's another thing. Write this down on the side. There's no places I don't have this. You can put it at the bottom of the page. Write this down. Training gives you internal confidence you need to win listings and sales. Training gives you internal confidence to win listings and sales. I remember calling for sale by owners. Ooh. How many of you call them FISBOs? Do you call them FISBOs in your office too? Yeah, we call them FISBOs too. <laughs> FISBOs. Ooh. They eat their young. Right? Ooh, FISBOs. <laughs> right? <laughs> I remember calling for sale by owners. And at one point, I remember calling them and thinking to myself, I had a flash. And the flash was, what if they say yes, and I actually have to go over there? You can relate. What's your name, sir? Ron. Ron. Ron can relate to that, right? What if What if I call them and they say yes, right? Then what am I going to do, right? <laughs> so sometimes, you know what, Kenny? Uh, and be real with this for a minute, and be honest with yourself for a minute, and realize this very important is that sometimes it's not the fear of failure that holds us back. Sometimes it's the fear of what? Success. The fear of success. You know that, right? Sometimes it's the fear of success. I've literally heard people say, I don't want to make that much money. I don't want to sell that many homes. You know how much money you have to pay in taxes? You know if my tax bracket goes up, I'm going to have to pay more in taxes? I've heard people say that. And I thought, well, i got to get away from this person. <laughs> this is scary. Right, Dad? Some of you are laughing because you actually sit next to someone like that in your own office. Because they're not here today, but yeah. <laughs> so it gives you internal confidence. Once you have that confidence, you're more apt to make the call. So really, you know, we don't have a, enough time to really spend enough one-on-one -on -one time together today. But the fact remains is that you have to look inside yourself and find out what's the problem. What am I doing now? Am I happy with the results? Am I not happy with the results? And if you're happy with the results, think about this. Some people say to me, uh, when, I, when I first got into management, I just came out of a sales career. I was selling almost 100 homes a year. 
And uh, so I was excited and happy and anxious to share with all the people in my office how I sold close to 100 homes a year and working 45 hours a week. And so I got all excited about it and I wanted to share. And then I learned the hard way, my first lesson in management, <laughs> is that not everybody wants to do that. And so I thought, real, I was thinking quick on my feet, and I thought, I was, in, I was talking to an agent one-on-one, -on -one, we're doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I said, finally, she said, John, look, I don't want to sell 100 homes a year. I said, well, how many homes a year do you want to sell? And she said, 25. I said, great, not a problem. How about if I teach you how to sell the 25 homes in the first quarter, and you take the rest of the year off? How would that be? Right? Would that be a value to you, gang? Yeah. Do more in less time? I promise I'll show you that today. Now, there are three attitudes you have to internalize first. And you have it in your notes, three attitudes to internalize. Number one, to serve. To serve. When I say to serve, what do I mean by that? Help me out here. Somebody volunteer. Let's make this interactive. Exactly. When you hear that to serve, and you're a real estate agent, what does that mean to you? Help. 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 Yes. What else? Customer service. Customer service. Education. Education. Right. To provide your right. To provide your services. Absolutely. To serve. Number two. Solve problems. problems. Number two. Solve problems. Number three. Honestly and sincerely, honestly and sincerely, care about people. Honestly and sincerely, care about people. Because caring about people is what caring about is all about. <laughs> right, Gang? <laughs> How many of you got in this real estate business because you wanted to help people? Raise your hand. <coughs> wow, almost all of them. How many of you guys in the real estate business because you like houses? Right? How many people got into the real estate business because you needed the cash? Right? <laughs> How many need the cash today? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So these are some attitudes to internalize. Here's what I've learned too, gang. I want to share this with you. Is that no permanent can change can take place in your mind unless you make up your mind to make that permanent change. So everything and anything I share with you today isn't going to work unless you have an open mind. And you're receptive to that information. You're receptive to making those changes. The mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's what? Open, right? You've heard that one before, right? <laughs> the mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. Now, go to the next page. In the blanks it says, when you learn the blank, blank, any blank, blank, you gain the blank, right, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the answer. When you learn the words, dialogue, and technique, you gain control. You gain control. <coughs> what does control mean to you in real estate? Ah, and finish it means no roses until it closes, right? You got it. What does control mean to you? Someone else? Yes. The ability to direct your direction to have evidence. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you both. That's perfect. How about control? How many would you like to control your income? <laughs> Control your outcome, right? If you knew the right words, you would be more effective. See, it's all about the words, gang. That's one of the many secrets I'm going to share with you today, is it's all about the words. Because if you know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, you are in control. How many of you have ever been, everyone should raise their hand, because it's not what they will, if you're honest, right? <laughs> How many of you have ever been in a situation, either when you started or just yesterday, where 
You knew it was something you could have said potentially to put the deal together, but you just didn't know how to handle it. Raise your hand. I'm raising my hand. Right? I'll be honest with you, right? Wow. Hey, gang, there are two different ways to learn things in life. Number one, by doing them and screwing up and learning from your own mistakes, right? And number two is learning from other people's mistakes. So if I share with you a few mistakes that I made, and I'm honest with you, and I tell you how bad I screwed up and what I screwed up on, right? You can learn from that. In fact, that's how they created training. A bunch of people went out and did it, whatever it is. And they screwed up, and they wrote it down and said, well, don't do that. <laughs> and they put it in a book and said, and they got a bunch of people together and said, hey, I went out and I screwed up and I, I did that, and that didn't work. So uh, don't do that. And by the way, I did this and it did work. So do this, right? That's what training is. So if you want to get there quicker, what should you do? Should you go out there and blaze a trail on your own, or should you learn from other people's mistakes? And other people's mistakes and learning from other people's mistakes is also disguised as what? Train. Help me out. Train. You got it. Now, uh, the reasons why people shy away from using words in dialogues, there are three different reasons. You don't have to make a note of this. Uh, you can if you want to. Uh, but uh, number one, they say, I want to be me. Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> I want to be me. Right? They resist using words, dialogues, scripts, things to say, what to say, when to say them. Most all of you have been through some type of training, either through your office, uh, your manager has given you some, some words to say, some things to do, right? Um, how many managers in the room? Raise your hand, please, if you're a manager or a broker owner. Give these folks a round of applause. Go ahead. That was a pretty lame round of applause. Wow. Yeah, right. Well, to, to Sandy's point, absolutely. I can't think of a tougher job in the world than being a broker owner and a manager. And you should thank God every day that you have that person in your life uh, that's there doing what they're doing for you because uh, I, I have a lot of respect for each and every one of you an amazing job and you take on an incredibly awesome role in this industry. And, um, but I do know the statistics, uh, some of you have greater success than others, but about 70% of the people make it, right, broker owners and managers, you recruit 10 people, might, 3 out of 10 might really blaze a trail and be really kick butt and last more than 3 years, right? Wow. Listen to your managers. <laughs> do what they say. They know what they're talking about. Now, um, of all the people in real estate, right, one out of ten, only one out of ten are what I call a born salesperson. I would call a natural, someone who is absolute natural salesperson. Someone, when they go to sleep, their face kind of looks like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have this personality and this smile about them that just sets everyone around them at ease. You know? And, and, or, you know, they're related to someone who is a, a builder of a multi subdivision lot, you know, and, and, uh, and they had all these sales. But for the rest of us, we had to work really hard, you know, to get good. So one out of ten. So what I want to try to say to you folks is that be careful who you model yourself after, because there are some people you can't model yourself after. You know, uh, I remember um, that there are people around me that were really successful in sales, and I wanted to be like her. I wanted to sell as many homes as her. But I very quickly realized this: I can't get away with saying the things that she says. I remember um, going to uh, one of her listings, and it was my buyer, and I walked into the listing. And uh, this, this realtor said uh, to my buyers, I can't even talk to about this. She says, she says, hey, you, husband, come here. Stand in front of this window. Look at that yard. You like that yard? Yeah, great. She says, wife, come here. Stand in front of this window. Look at that yard. She goes, you can see your kids playing out there. Now you, husband. 
go sit in that chair right there. And she pushed him into the chair. And I'm just kind of like, what is this lady doing, right? And she says, listen, you can watch your kids out the window while your lazy husband sits there reading a the newspaper. And then, together, this is the house for you. They bought the house. And I thought, how do you role play that, Sandy? Reflex by doing what? 
practice, drill, and rehearse. Practice, drill, and rehearse. Role play, right? Read it out loud. Do you know how professional actors and actresses learn their scripts? They practice. In fact, the technique that they use is they stand in front of a mirror and they take the script and they read it out loud as fast as they possibly can over and over and over again until it becomes internal and it gets embedded into their subconscious mind. And imagine if you did that with one dialogue, one script, one objection handling tool or technique. Once a week, at the end of the year, you'd have 52 dialogue, scripts, objection handling techniques burned into your brain that would stay there forever. Think about the positive. How, what a phenomenal, you would be a force to be reckoned with. Well, imagine that, imagine that. Unbelievable. So again, it goes back to taking action, right folks? Taking action. Now, uh, reflex, it reminds me of a story of a man's boss that said to him, listen, uh, you're being relocated to Alberta. And he said, Alberta? He said, the only two things in Alberta are lewd women and hockey players. And the boss said, I'll have you know that my wife is from Alberta. And very quickly said, oh really, what team does she play with? <laughs> That's reflex. <laughs> All right, so it has to be that quick. Some people say the third reason why people don't want to use scripts and dialogues is they say they have a bad memory. Right, Kane? Have you ever heard that before? Oh, I have a bad memory. I can't remember. I have a bad memory. There's no such thing as a bad memory. Everybody, sing with me. You ready? Happy <laughs> Now, wait a minute. How did you know that song? How did you learn that? I thought you had a, I thought you had a bad memory. Right? <laughs> if you had a bad memory, how do you know that song? Repetition, 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 over and over and over again. And you learned it at a time in your life where nobody said to you, you can't remember stuff. Do you know that the human mind can consume more information and the, and the human, a human being can learn more languages when they're younger than at any point in their life? Because we set these limiting beliefs on our own mind and our own subconscious mind that we can't do it. There's something around us that's saying, or people around us saying, you can't do it. And there's a part of you that believes it and you have to get rid of that. Zig Ziglar calls it stinking thinking. You need a checkup from the neck up, right? <laughs> okay. Now, um, let's go to the five money makers. Floyd uh, came up with this years ago, and I'm, I'm going to share with you too, Gary, that these are psychologically sound, history-proving dialogues. And those of you who have attended a Floyd Whitman course probably know these by heart, but it's a great reminder for you to put these back into your vocabulary and use these techniques again. You ready? Uh, so now that you're sold on dialogues and scripts and techniques, I'm going to share with you the five most powerful scripts and techniques and dialogues that are guaranteed to make you at least two more sales over the next six months. Are you ready? Let me hear it. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Oh, that's good. Good. <laughs> Number one, if somebody confronts you with an objection, example, uh, you know, uh, Matty, I go to the, I knock on the door and I and I come in and they, they open the door and they look at me first thing and they go, ah, "We're not going to list with you today." <coughs> what do you say? No problem. I'll you got it. Back yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back every day until you do right. So write the words down. No problem. <clears throat> Anytime you're confronted with an objection, if you just handled it with no problem. It totally diffuses the whole thing. And what it helps you to do, it helps you to move on and keep going and stay on track without handling the objection. Um, a pro, there are three different classifications in real estate. You know what they are? You have the, the great agents, the good agents, and you have the licensees, okay? A licensee would go, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're not going to listen with it. Well, oh, okay, well, that's not, all right, yeah, I, uh, blah, 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 I don't know what to say. A good agent would say, well, let me ask you a question. Why is it that you don't want to list your house with me today? I thought when we talked on the phone that you wanted me to come over to a market analysis and that eventually leads to, you know, me listing the property. They have this fun blah, 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 blah. A great agent says what? No. no problem. Let me hear it one more time. A great agent says, no. All 
right, so let's role play. I say to you, you're the agent, I'm the seller. I said, listen, I'm not listening with you today. And you say, no problem. I said, good. This is good. All right. <laughs> Second one, use this um, if they say, should I? If the homeowner says, should I, you know, lose in the house, he's just walking around the property and we're listening and he sees a leak in the ceiling and blew his dad's clipboard out and he looks at the, the leak and he goes, and the seller says, what, should I? And Lou, because he's a great agent, he says, I would, right? <laughs> so anytime somebody says to you, asks you a question, should I, you say, I would. Now, who are the new people again? Less than a year in the business, raise your hand, less than a year in the business. Here's what's going to happen to you. At least once a year, you're going to be sitting across the table from a buyer, a couple, let's say, and they're going to turn to each other, and the cup in the... The, the husband's going to turn to the wife, and the wife's going to turn to the husband, and she's going to say, Honey, should we list the house? And he's gonna, they're both, both going to turn to you, and they're going to say, Okay, David, you think we should sign this offer now? And David's going to say, I would. I would. Guaranteed at least one sale a year doing that. Just by saying those two words. But here's what the good agent says. Well, let's go over to the computer and look at the professional competitive market analysis of the property. The new licensee says, go home and think about it. When you come back tomorrow, it'll be on deposit and someone else will buy it. Okay? <laughs> so a great agent would say, I do. Right. Now, here's the point, Dan, you know, and here's the problem because I can say, I can say, there's only a few of you in this room. I can tell by your faces you're like, it's got to be more complex than that, John. It's just too simple. Listen, gang, it's the simplicity that makes it so powerful. Saying less is what? More. more. Saying less is more. Saying less is better in many situations. You know, I don't know if you've heard this before, but uh, 10,000 Philistines were killed with the jawbone of an ass, and just as many sales and listings are lost with the same weapon. <laughs> the, next, the next one, I will correct you. The next one is, if somebody, uh, the best closing question, when you get to the end of your presentation, you shared about you know, you and your company, you've got an agreement on you and your company, they like you, they like your company, like everything you show them, and then they say, uh, and, then, and you show them the price, the comparative market analysis, then you show them net, what they're going to net in their pocket after the sale. And it's usually at that point, I remember this when I first started the sales, right? I would get a little nervous because at the end, I don't have anything left to say. I don't, I don't know what else to do. And oftentimes, because I was a licensee, I would wait for them to close themselves. Have you ever done that before? I don't even ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> at least at one point you have, right? I, I thought that my presentation was so powerful and so good and so exciting that I wanted to make my presentation so powerful and so good and so compelling that they would close themselves because I was nervous to close because I didn't want to sound like a salesperson, right? But then I realized that I had to use the power of persuasion to help them get what they want. Because here's the truth, Kenny. If you don't close them and you don't get that listing, they're going to end up in the hands of somebody who's incompetent and is not going to get them the most amount of money for their home. You have to realize that in your mind, they need you. You are what they need. And the only way you can help them is to close them. Okay? Try to burn that into your brain. So the, what, what did I, after I started learning about uh, Floyd's and his techniques and everything, and I learned what to say, and there's two words, and here they are. At the end of the presentation, when I was done, you ever get to that point where you're done, right, Kenny? Mm -hmm. And there's a little tension, am I right? Yeah. And I say this, any questions? Any questions? <laughs> and you know what they say, Mary Beth? Sometimes say, yeah, what's with the lockbox? I don't want a lockbox on my house, right? No problem. No problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Nancy, you get a free donut. <laughs> An extra donut, right? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> right? So, and then if I then I'd have an objection that I could handle, because I knew how to handle the objection, 
I would go ahead and handle the objection. When I was done handling the lockbox objection, then I would turn around and I would say what? Any? Okay, so uh, let's role play. I'm the agent and you're the agent and the seller is over there and we get to the end of our presentation and we say, okay, so based on what I've shown you, this is approximately what you're going to net after the sale of the property. Uh, is this a number you can live with? And the seller says, yeah. And then you say what? Let me hear it. And then they say, sign here. I love it, right? <laughs> so, you know what, gang? It can be simple. It can be easy. Just using that one technique alone, depending on how much you're prospecting and how many listing appointments you're going on, could get you at least another five to ten sales a year, easily. Just that one technique alone. Use this if they ramble on or if they're being vague. You know, sometimes, uh, like for instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've asked them, they said, so based on what I've shown you about me and my company, uh, if we could agree on price, would you list with me today? And uh, they give me one of these. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, you ever get one of those? Uh -huh. Of course you did, right? Uh, yeah. So whenever you get a, uh, if they ramble or they're vague, write this down. Say this to me. Is that a yes? <laughs> Is that a yes? Is that a yes? Whenever they ramble or they're vague, say, Is that a yes? So, um, it would kind of go like this. I will play with you. I'll be the agent, you be the seller. Okay? So based on what I've shown you about me and my company, if we could agree our price tonight, would you, would you be willing to list with me tonight? Is that a yes? No. Okay. <laughs> Money makers, and they will make money. 